when you're thinking about solids, you usually start early on, solids are very hard and so on. When they get a little bit older, perhaps year five and six, you start to introduce some solids that don't seem to obey the rules. That can be a bit tricky, but we've come up with a really good demonstration to help you. So, if we're thinking about solids and the properties of solids, they've already learnt the basics, but there are actually solids that don't obey the rules. I'm thinking here about year five and six. Okay. If you were to say to your class, tell me the properties of a solid, I bet they'd come up with something like that, wouldn't they? Yeah. Um, something that's hard, um, keeps its shape. Absolutely, and those are the phrases we've taught them to use, that's fine. But there are lots of solids that have tiny granules that don't behave like this. In fact, mm -hmm. they can pour and they will flow and they take the shape of the container. And those are the phrases we've already taught them for liquids. Yeah. So now we're going to have to try and expand on it. Okay. Things like <coughs> sand. Sand, salt, sugar, you can pour them. They're tiny particles, they move over each other, but they are definitely solids. Yeah. So the best thing really is to start with something that is a big solid, because sand, usually little tiny particles like that. You could start with something perhaps like sugar lumps. Yeah. Um, now, we can get obviously, you know, granulated sugar or something, so you could say sugar lumps, granulated sugar. But I like the idea of them actually crushing something themselves and seeing that what they're doing is breaking it up into tiny particles. Sugar lumps are quite tricky to break up. So okay. I thought about biscuits. Mm -hmm. Biscuits are really easy to crush with a rolling pin or something like that. And then when they're fine enough, you can put them into different shaped containers. So. I've brought along some biscuits and a rolling pin and <laughs> okay. a carrier bag, a little plastic bag. Um, so it's a bit like cookery, really. Yeah. <laughs> of course, this is going to be great fun, isn't it, yeah. in class? Um, you don't have to use a uh, cooking rolling pin. Lots of schools obviously have these. This is a craft rolling pin. Okay. You will need to um, get the particles fairly small because you want them to pour and you want them to see that they're behaving like sand or sugar or salt and give them a really good crush. Yeah. And this is quite easy to do. Yeah. And what we've done is I, I've collected all sorts of different types of containers. I've already put some biscuit crumbs in that one. How are we doing? Nearly oh, there. Oh, nearly there. Yeah, that'll be yeah. brilliant. So you can see that I've got biscuit crumbs in a tall container. I think it's a good idea to collect all sorts of different containers. These, some of these are glass, some of these are plastic. Good shapes. Yeah. So that you can show them that these, even though it's a solid, it takes the shape of the container. So this one is taking the shape of a tall, thin container. But we've got quite a short, fat, dumpy one there. Mm -hmm. um, if I pour mine in and then you can yeah. pour yours in, we can fill that up. And you can see here it comes pouring just like a liquid. There we go. Okay. And we can add yours. We can see the biscuits taking the shape of the short fat container. Yep. Even though it is a solid. And I think probably this is a, a really good way of getting them to understand. Because they're seeing you, or they're doing it themselves, yeah. pouring a solid. We started off with a biscuit. We've still got biscuit, it's the <laughs> same thing, and it is still a solid, but it pours. It doesn't always have to obey the rules that we've thought of for liquids. This is to do with particle size. That's the way. Do you think that would help? Yeah, I think that's brilliant. Thank you.